This is George Rinaldi with a special tropical update concerning Hurricane Earl, and it's about 11.40 p.m. on August the 30th. Earl is threatening the southeastern United States. Right now, Earl is clearing the U.S. Virgin Islands, and it's moving west-northwest toward the extreme eastern Bahamas. Expect to turn to the northwest tomorrow and tomorrow night and on Wednesday Earl should be approaching the coast of the southeastern United States and will be very near Cape Hatteras, North Carolina late Thursday night and early Friday morning and by very near I mean I'm expecting a possible landfall near Cape Hatteras. I'm expecting Earl to be a category 2 or category 3 hurricane. I'm not so sure it's going to make it that far north as a category 4 but it really doesn't make any difference. Any hurricane is a dangerous hurricane. And I'm recommending as of right now that Hatteras and Ocracoke Islands be evacuated beginning on Tuesday morning. And I don't think it's a good idea to try to ride this one out because the future intensity of it and the future track are both very uncertain. And in the event this thing actually goes inland, it's going to be a lot worse for you than it's going to be if it just moves in over the island, like the Iowa moves over Hatteras or stays just offshore. Late in the night Thursday or early Friday morning, there should actually be a turn in the north northeast. I'm expecting Earl to be passing off to Virginia Capes probably about before noon on Friday and then race off toward New England where yet more trouble could occur because I'm thinking there's a possibility of landfall or at least a near miss from Cape Cod upwards until up, upwards to Maine and New Brunswick and a probable definite hit on Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is going to really bear the brunt of this. It's probably going to get even, even worse conditions than Hatteras or the Virginia coast. Now, here's what to expect from this. Hatteras and Ocracoke Island. Increasing clouds on Tuesday. Wednesday, breezy. A few showers moving in. Wednesday night and Thursday. Showers becoming windy. Thursday night, hurricane conditions over Ocracoke and Hatteras Island. Thursday night into Friday morning and then improving Friday afternoon over eastern Virginia, over the Tidewater area, we shouldn't see much of anything from Earl tonight and tomorrow. We're increasing clouds on Wednesday. Wednesday night and Thursday, cloudy, breezy, showers. Overnight Thursday night, it could be a period of heavy squalls with winds of 35 to 45 miles an hour, an occasional gust of 50 miles an hour. And the wind should shift around in the north from the east as the center passes offshore. And thankfully, at least for us up in eastern Virginia, I think it'll be over and done with pretty quickly over, say, a period of several hours. I think it'll be Friday morning till early Friday afternoon, and hopefully by Friday night it'll be gone. And then it's going to track up the coast, passing probably not too far from New York City, and then on into New England, or off New England, and then off to the Canadian Maritime Provinces. And the models are pretty much showing landfall in Nova Scotia as a Category 1 hurricane. Um, I'll be doing further updates on this over the next couple of days. I don't go back to work until Thursday. And I'm going to do another one probably around 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning after I look at the models again. And hopefully it's going to show the, the storm tracking a little bit further to the east. But unfortunately, what I've been looking at all day is every time they run the models, the storm is, is it's coming a little bit further west. I think it was yesterday. They didn't have Earl getting any further west than 71 west. Now it's getting to 75 west. And if it, and 75 west is where Cape Hatteras is. Hatteras is about a 35 north, 75 west. If it gets any further than that, it's going to come inland over North Carolina coastal plain. And then we're looking at a whole different ball game for eastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia. And I'm going to watch and see and, you know, see what happens, see if the trough of low pressure that I'm hoping will, will steer Earl out to see if it gets here quick enough and I'll be back in about another eight to nine hours with another update and just a reminder Carolina's up to New England you need to review your hurricane plan and actually if you live on the outer banks you need to implement that hurricane plan starting first thing in the morning you really need to get off Anderson over Coke Island you don't want to even try to ride this one out there 
Also, if you live in coastal sections of Virginia, like along the Virginia Beach Ocean Front, Sand Bridge, um, even northern Norfolk and Virginia Beach, the Ocean View area, these areas are subject to flooding, and it doesn't really take much of a storm. Even a, a, a tropical storm can cause flooding in that area. So you might want to also consider your options before the effects of Earl reach our area. And this is George Rinaldi signing off for now.